Um, so Lance, how you doing man? Good to be back at the Doncaster Dome mate, very very excited, especially after the last outing to Bulgaria, what a show. Mate, it feels like so long ago since we were here, we're like making mistakes, you know, this is our 38th show, four have been away from here, so you know, the majority of shows have been here, we're just making so many mistakes. And we literally rode on the back of that crest of a wave, you know, with Bulgaria, like you say, what a show. Um, amazing going out there. From your perspective, how was it? Right, first things first, you know, I've, I've, I've announced professional MMA overseas before. One thing that struck me immediately was the skill and the level of the fighters in Bulgaria. Yeah, yeah. They, they build men differently yeah. out there. Wow, you know, that for me, it was all unknown names. Yeah. Um, no, no one I come across before. Tough job. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, amazing, amazing standard of fighters. Um, it seems like, you know, in that part of the world, there is a, a big hunger for martial arts. Yeah, mate, uh, I mean, to reiterate that, one of the guys we took obviously one guy from the uk and some of his team members were fighting a couple of weeks after so they asked me if there was a gym that they could go to and just do some training keep busy and um they went to a gym and they came back and they said they they just literally schooled our guys like he, and as you say the level of fighting on the show was was just incredible yeah, so, yeah. Uh, the production, you know, backstage, it was uh, it was a, a joy to get out there and to be, you know, at that level of show, um, just rocking up overseas and having it done, you know, at that UK standard um, overseas as well was great. Yeah, we, we obviously visited the venue when we first got there. And I was kind of worried when I first saw the venue because it was like overgrown outside and the national volleyball team were playing inside. It, it was kind of, it looked old, you know, it looked like it needed some work, there were railings like moving and stuff. But when we actually got in there on the Saturday and, and we set it as a venue, it just, I mean, we were able to change some things and make it come together and it just looked ace. Yeah. And I was, I was so, if you'd have taken my kind of view on Wednesday that we got there compared to Saturday, it was just chalk and cheese, you know, we made it look amazing. The fans made it look incredible. Yeah. And they, they were just a great fans, you know, they came before the first fight. They left after the last fight. That was one thing I noticed compared to sometimes in the UK, yeah. when, when, you know, the crowd is coming and going, in and out, uh, packing out throughout the night. Those guys were sat down there before the action started and they left after the last yeah. fight. Um, I think it was a great move for you guys to, to um, position the show in that area with the demographic there yeah. because it was the it was what's it called student grad it was basically yeah. like a student yeah. village so you've got a lot of young people there interested in the martial arts yeah. not necessarily I guess friends of the fighters they were just coming to witness the spectacle yeah yeah that's right yeah. Um, we obviously you know we've not been out there before so we had to kind of build our brand out there we, which isn't easy you know you're going into a, a kind of unknown and we'd not kind of had Bulgarian fighters on here, so yeah. so it wasn't as though we were a ready built name like the Icelandics or the Snowbirds because of how many people come and fight here. So we literally had to go out and build to an unaware audience, build that brand first, yeah. so that they'd come and watch the spectacle. And I think that was a bold move because, from my point of view, on my way out there, I hadn't seen the fight card, and I kind of assumed that you were going to be taking a load of fighters out from the UK and then matching them against the Bulgarians. Yeah. But that actually wasn't the case. We had a Bulgarian heavy card um, with one UK fighter on it. Yeah. You had guys coming over from Georgia, you yeah. know, so it was... Macedonia. Uh, uh, yeah, Macedonia. Yeah. I think it was a great opportunity, you know, to obviously to do the show yeah. overseas, but also to provide that huge showcase for the local Bulgarian talent, yeah. rather than just shipping a load of, you know, our great fighters over there yeah. and, you know, and having a face off. Yeah, I, I kept having to say on video, and obviously not everyone sees every video, but I, I kept saying that this isn't about a UK promotion taking a load of UK fighters and it being England versus Bulgaria. Yeah. This is Cage Deal in Bulgaria. Yeah. And, and we're gonna showcase the Bulgarian fighters. And like you say, it was a bold move. There were times when I thought, <laughs> I thought I must be but, stupid. But it paid off. And what, I think what you've done there is you've sort of set a benchmark, a standard of how a promotion can go overseas and like you say, not just take their fighters with them, but say, this is us, we're yeah. Cage Steel, this is what we do, and this is what we're gonna do here in Bulgaria, check it yeah. out. Do you know what? That fight finished, I had opportunities of <laughs> inquiries from 
four or five different countries. Why? We even had um, inquiries or opportunities or actual offers from other parts of that country saying, come to my city. And we're talking like mayors and people like saying, you know, we'll, we'll sort the venues out, we'll give you these, we'll, we, we want that that you just brought there in my city. And it's yeah. like, wow, you know, we really now, I mean, we haven't really had a chance to, to sit down and, and do the, the kind of um, letting the dust settle and looking at what's, what's, what we've got opportunity. Straight right. on to the next one. Straight on to this and it's been yeah. mad. And, and I'm like, oh, listen, after this show, at least we could take a breath. But then our, our kind of charity side kicks in. So we'll be doing the six week holidays for the kids. Yep. And I'm like, oh my word, I don't know when we're going to rest, but we'll obviously find somewhere in between the six week holidays and, and, and after this show. And we really need to look at what, what a chance we're going to like recapitulate a little bit. Yeah, yeah me, it's like, I, you know, there's that many opportunities now. And it's, it's about taking, taking the right ones. And that's not basing it on like a financial decision that's taking it for, for the best of, of what we can achieve you yeah. know and like you say that that we did there you know I'm really proud of, of the team here and the team that we had in Bulgaria because everyone kind of made it work and it, it worked amazing yeah. like you yeah, said there was no hiccups was like their, their team was great they worked well with our yeah. team so yeah it was very, very smooth in that yeah. respect it was you know it was a real stamp as to say this is what you, what we can do. This is what we can achieve. So, you know, I'm not sure how the team will feel if I start saying, let's do another different country. Where are we going next, Tom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but me, oh God, I mean, I think I think I said it on one of the videos of like forging steel stuff. It was surreal. We were on a plane doing a show in a different country. It still doesn't feel real. Like we've done it and it's still, I'm saying it out loud. I've got goosebumps. There, look. <laughs> but yeah, it's actually I have goosebumps. actually got goosebumps. I can yeah, see yeah. them from here. Look. And, and I still, it still doesn't feel like we did that. Mm. Cage still did that. What? Like, I don't, I don't know. You know when um, people say imposter syndrome? Yeah. I think, I think we got imposter syndrome, not just for myself, but for the whole company. It's like, we, we did that. We just you went. left beside yourself after oh, that show, basically. We yeah. got back and I'm like, we just did a show in Bulgaria. What is that about? And like I said, it still had sunk in. I think because of that much pressure to get this one on, at some point next week, some point next week, team, we need to sit down and go, whoa! Well, it's really only <laughs> four weeks ago. Four, yeah, five, four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah. yeah, four weeks today. So we were straight into this. We've had so many pullouts on this card. We've just been swapping and changing, swapping and changing. We just had time to breathe. And it's, it's been a whirlwind. And at some point next week, we need to sit down and slap ourselves on the back of it and just say well done you know um it'd be nice to get out there thank the team out there without the pressure of a show yeah i think that was that you know that'd be an important thing to do but yeah we loved it we loved bulgaria um what happens next i don't know watch this space then. yeah but here we are you know <laughs> we've talked about bulgaria but actually now we're you know we're back here in the uk we're back in in what's become our home is the doncaster dome 30 odd shows here now. Um, tonight's tonight's card. Um, fewer fights than we normally do, but we've been we've been kind of trialing this, trialing more fights, less fights, pay per view, because we want to get our offering right. So at some point we have to we have to kind of gamble, you know, and yeah. take these decisions. So there are fewer fights tonight. A, a couple fewer than we wanted. I kind of booked it at 14. We were 13 until this morning and it dropped to 12. So we're there or thereabouts, but the the fights on the card, you know, they're, they're gonna be great. Yeah. And and you look at them as a promoter and you're excited about that fight, you know, it's a good fight. Yeah, so, and you know, 12, 12 fights on the card, mixed discipline, amateur and pro, that's nothing that anyone could grumble at. That's still an action-packed show yeah, at, yeah. at pro level. Yeah, there's pro, amateur, there's cage boxing, we're trying to do different different kind of things on there to, to appeal to more more people. Um, you've probably got a couple of tough bits tonight. There's a couple of names on there that are like ah uh, the Icelandic names. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, luckily I have done a whole a whole um, Danish and Finnish card before. Sound this was going back about five or six years. 
Um, I must say, those names are difficult. Uh, you know, Islamic names, Arabic names, I can, uh, Eastern European names, no problem. The most difficult names to pronounce in the whole world come from Kazakhstan. Yeah. They are the most difficult. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah th th those kind of names, they've got so many syllables and, yeah. um, and, and, and sounds you've never heard <laughs> yeah. before, and they don't look like they're spelled. You know, the, uh, the Nordics, the Icelandics, that's not so bad. Once you've got your head around it, yeah. you know, Flynn and Rickson, it, it, yeah. it, it rolls off the tongue after a yeah. while, but that's my job. <laughs> you know, we had, we had one yesterday, uh, Dorian, a Polish lad, and it's like something like Schwitzkowski or something like that. And I had to ask him a couple of times to, to kind of say it and, and me to get it right. And I just thought you, I thought, oh my God, MC most talented. Because for me, a name's important. Yeah. It's your name, it's your most important thing. So I, I want to get everyone's name right. So I think, you know, if, if I was MC, I'd be like, I think I'd be writing it how you say it. That's what you we do. do that? A lot of the time, yeah, um, particularly for the, you know, four or five syllables plus, a lot of the time it is the case of writing it phonetically, how you're going <laughs> to say it yourself. For many other people, they might look at that word and think, what, you say it like that? But that's yeah. the way that you say it. And yeah. then, you know, when you're in the heat of the moment, the lights are flashing, you know, the adrenaline's pumping, it has to be right in the moment. Yeah. And that's the most important thing. So for Dorian, how would you know how to say his name? Do you ask him? Do you? Um, if I wasn't sure myself, I would aim to, yeah, I would go to someone of that country or, or preferably the fighter themselves and say, you know, how is this pronounced? And just go have a little back and forth with them. It's not always about reading off the card. Sometimes it's actually about the muscle memory of the mouth. And once you've said a word a couple of times, yeah, yeah. you know how the muscles in the mouth are formed and then it just flows off a little bit easier. So yeah, yeah it's the classic practice makes perfect. Yeah, so that's a little insight. I always, I, I was kind of wondering, thinking, well, I think I'd be writing it how you kind of say it phonetically, as you say. But um, it's kind of an insight for us. It's good. Um, we heard a lot in Bulgaria. You kind of had a little buzz, buzz line. Let's get down to business. Yes, yeah, that's uh, that's my little trademark. I like that. You know, I'm, what I'm trying to do with my MC and Dom, and I think you'll appreciate this is. I don't actually come from a combat sports background, although now I'm heavily invested in the combat sports world, I come from a performance background. Yeah. So I've always been about show business, presenting, being a rapper, being an artist, being a performer. So I always try to bring that extra, um, that extra sort of edge to what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and I always feel like it's very important as an MC to not be doing your own thing. You actually need to be a conduit. And this is what um, many people forget and maybe they overlook. My job as an MC is to be a conduit between the energy of the crowd and what's going on in the ring. And I, I'm the point of contact. Yeah. So I always try to mirror the energy that I feel in the room in my presentation uh, and, you know, sort of thrive off that buzz that's coming off the crowd, yeah. basically. <clears throat> I think, you know, I, I've known you for a while now. I think you kind of sent me a message a long time ago and kind of pitched yourself. Yep. You sent me a load of stuff and it was very different. I'll be honest with you, it was very different and I, I kind of liked it at the time. Um, and then you ended up doing a role for us and, you know, it, it was great. So, you know, for Well, us, from the first time I came to the Dome, which is, it was sort of a, roughly a year ago, yeah, last I summer, so, yeah. you know, from the, um, I've done a, I cut my teeth in MMA uh, back in 2015, 16, when I was getting into combat sports, <laughs> constantly going up north. So I've worked at a lot of different pro MMA shows and as soon as I rolled into here and met the team, I knew that everything here was absolutely on par. You know, no, no, nothing was left out. I was very, I was looked after. Everyone was very friendly. Um, you know, all questions are answered quickly. And for me, um, any of that stuff in the background that's taken away that makes my job easier is obviously a massive bonus. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, really pleased to be a part of the team, mate. It's good to have you part of the team. Obviously, uh, we haven't talked about your skating skills. Oh yeah, um, well this I is actually first... cutting into my skating time right now. Yeah, so, so the first time that, that Lance ever came to do a show, he he kind of misjudged the time of the doors. I think you said, is it three? And I said, no, it's five. You were like, oh, sound, I'm off out on my skates. And then when we booked your flights for Bulgaria, you were like, oh mate, I need, I need 10 kilogram luggage or 20, I can't remember. It was 20. 20. <laughs> you said it's hair products, which I have. Just my skates and my hair you know, products is at least 15 kilograms. You know, so. I know me nothing about either of those subjects. Like hair products, forget it. Rollerblades, you ain't getting me on no well, I've got to say, Doncaster, and especially the lakeside area around Doncaster Dome, is some of the best rollerblading in the UK. The, all of the tarmac here is like brand new. It's like 
Dancing <laughs> on ice. <laughs> <laughs> so we, are we going to expect a video? You usually do like... As soon as this is over, it. the blades are on and I'm outside. I think this is, is over then. <laughs> <laughs> what say you? Yeah, let's, let's go and do it all. Right, let's do it. <laughs>